Welcome to this new series where we'll be looking at logic and foundations with the functional programming language Haskell. Now the goal of this video is to tell you a bit about what to expect from the course. So the course will be sort of split into two parts, one of which will be theory and the other one of which will be programming. In the theory part, we'll basically be covering sort of the standard topics in a foundations of math course. So first we'll be spending a fair amount of time on logic and proof theory. And then in the second part, we'll basically move on to set theory. So in the set theory part, we'll see sets, types, and lists, along with relations and functions, induction and recursion. Then we'll move on to number systems, and then in the end, we'll see polynomials and co-recursion. What will set this course apart from your usual foundations of math course is that we'll be implementing many of the ideas we'll see in the theory part in the functional programming language Haskell. So Haskell is a purely functional, strictly typed language with lazy evaluation. We'll be seeing exactly what these terms mean as the course goes along, but for the moment it's probably enough to say that Haskell is an interesting language to do math in. In addition, it's very different from your usual object-oriented imperative languages, for example, Python. So if you know how to program in something like Python, then learning Haskell will probably cause you to rethink certain things. For example, in Haskell, we don't really have things like for loops or where loops, so basically you kind of have to learn to program without them. Now, at first this might seem sort of like a nightmare, but it turns out that actually this leads to very elegant and concise code. As an example, I've written down the code for a function here which calculates the maximum of some list. The first thing you'll notice is that in the first line we actually have a type declaration, so we have to specify exactly what the input and output types of this function are going to be. In this case, our function, which is called maximum prime, converts a list of a's into a value of type a. So that's indicated by this a in square brackets and then the arrow going to the a without the brackets. Now before this, we have this ord a in parentheses, and this indicates that the objects of type a need to have some order on them. And the reason for that is that our function is going to compare them with a greater than a symbol. Okay, so that already explains what it means for Haskell to be strictly typed. Every function that we specify has a definitive type signature. Now it seems like a bit of a hassle to always write down these type signatures, but luckily Haskell also has very solid type inference. So in most cases, Haskell can actually infer the type of your function based on the things you're doing inside the function. So in many cases, we can actually just write down the definition for the function and then have Haskell infer the type that it thinks it is, and if that's correct, then everything's good, and otherwise we slightly modify it. Another nice feature of Haskell is that it supports pattern matching, which means we can sort of split the definition of the function into cases based on how the argument looks like. And here we see pattern matching in action. So in the second line of the function, it says maximum prime, and then we have these empty square brackets is equal to error empty list. What we're doing here is we're pattern matching the empty list. So whenever this function gets the empty list, then we're saying to return an error, namely that it's an empty list because we can't give you the maximum element of an empty list. Then in the third line, we're saying maximum prime of square brackets x is equal to x. This will pattern match a list with a single element x in it. So if we have a list which just has a single element in it, well then that single element will be its maximum, so we just return that single element. Then the final case, which is happening in the fourth line, is when our list contains at least two elements, and the pattern that we're using here is this x colon x's. Here x is the first element of this list, and x's is the remaining elements of the list. Now the idea to tackle this remaining case is to compare this first element in the list with the maximum of the remaining elements. So this is what these bars are doing. This is again like a split into cases. So in the first case, x is greater than the maximum of the remaining elements. In that case, x is actually the maximum of the entire list and we return x. And otherwise, we return the maximum of the remaining elements since x is less than or equal to that maximum. In order to make the code more readable here, we've used another feature of Haskell, which is this WHERE clause. So up in the case distinction, I have a thing called max tail, and in the WHERE clause, I actually say what max tail is, namely it's the maximum of the remaining part of the list, namely of the x's. 
So as you can see, this function is actually defined recursively because in the last case where we have a list with more than one element, we're actually calling the function again on the tail of the list. The reason the recursion works here is because we've defined what the maximum of a single element list is, and this forms the base case. And this is in fact the way we'll get around using for loops. We'll basically always be defining functions recursively. All right, so I hope that uh, this gives you some uh, idea of what Haskell is all about and also about the topics we'll be seeing in the theory part. Uh, the important thing is that there will be no prerequisites assumed at all. This means I'll start from a very basic level on the theory side and also on the Haskell side, we'll start from the assumption that you've never seen Haskell before. Concerning organization, the two parts of the course, so the theory and the programming will sort of interact in one way. Namely, we'll be using aspects of the theory in the programming part, but not conversely. This means that in principle, you could completely ignore the programming and just learn the theory, and this would also form a self-contained course. Moreover, we'll have to spend some time in order to build up enough knowledge in Haskell in order to be even able to implement the theory. So at the start, the two parts will be more or less independent. A consequence of this is that it will be difficult to put the videos in a nice linear order in a playlist that makes sense. So basically I'll just have to kind of make arbitrary decisions there. So if you want, you can just follow the course playlist in the order that it's in. So there it's just basically going to be like a balanced exposition between the theory and the programming. On the other hand, since the two parts are sort of independent, at least in the beginning, you can also watch more of the theory videos and skip the programming or do the opposite. I'll make sure to always say at the beginning of the programming videos what theory I'm expecting you to know, but probably it'll be a lot less than all of the theory that has come before the corresponding programming video in the playlist. So once you've learned the basic syntax of Haskell, you can probably also just skip around in those videos and watch the ones you find interesting. With that, I'll wrap up this introduction and I hope that you really enjoy this course.